Hi. In this video, I'm going to show you a couple of Python keywords that you can use to tweak the behavior of a loop. These keywords are break and continue. I'd like to bring back an example program from two lessons ago. Remember it? Uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe. Okay, well, let me remind you what the key insight was here. Remember that even though the condition became false in the middle of the while loop, the rest of the body still ran because the condition isn't checked until the interpreter returns to the top. The fact is that sometimes, checking the condition at the top of the while loop isn't the most effective strategy. Let's slightly change this program to illustrate the point. This program asks the user for a number, and it keeps asking them for a different number until the number they enter is positive. In this program, we have to repeat the same line twice, once outside the loop and once inside. Repeating code is generally bad and should be avoided. So how do we rewrite the program with only one copy of this line? Let's just get rid of the first instance of the line. Well, if we do that, x may not be defined when we check it the first time. Okay, well, let's just give x a dummy value before the while loop. Now, we end up printing a warning about x needing to be positive before we should. As a user, we might see that and think, what are you talking about? I haven't even typed anything yet. What if we switch the input line and the print line? Well, we will end up printing an unnecessary warning at the end, after the user enters a valid positive number. The problem here is that we just don't check the condition in time to know that we don't have to print the warning. Fear not, we're getting close to the right solution, I promise. What would be great is if we had a way to check the condition in the middle of the while loop. Turns out we can using break. Break is a statement that immediately terminates a loop. Okay, let's see it in action. In this program, we use an if statement to explicitly check the value of x immediately after the user types a number in. If x is, in fact, positive, the loop should be finished. We use the word break to terminate the loop. When the interpreter is in a loop and hits a break statement, it immediately skips to whatever is after the loop. This happens regardless of what the condition is at the top. Note that the condition in the if statement is not the same as the condition in the while loop. This is fine. We don't really need to check the value of x at the top of the while loop anymore. x is not going to change between the if statement and the next time the top of the loop is reached. In this situation, we can actually replace the while loop condition with true. Since true will always evaluate to true, the while loop will never decide that it is finished based on its condition. Usually, this is a dangerous thing to do, since the loop could go on forever. In this case, however, we can trust that the break statement will eventually cause the loop to stop. We can also get rid of the initial assignment to x, since we will assign to it as soon as we enter the while loop. This is often called the loop and a half approach, since this while loop will do some number of full loops, followed by a partial or half loop. Okay, so that's the break statement. What's continue? The continue statement, shown on the right, skips only to the top of the loop. Execution resumes at the top, where the condition is evaluated. Contrast this with the break statement, shown on the left, which skips the whole loop. Execution resumes after the end of the loop. Both break and continue can also be used in for loops. The break statement, shown on the left, essentially does the same thing as in while loops. The continue statement, shown on the right, also skips to the top of the loop with for loops. It is important to note that the value of i will be incremented as it normally would when the interpreter returns to the top. Let's look at a more complex example of the loop and a half approach in the editor. The problem we're trying to solve is we're trying to find a bike, and we want a bike that is between 55 and 60 centimeters in its frame size. So if we run this, we get to enter one bike frame size, and if it's in the range, let's say it's 57 centimeters, it'll say it's the correct size. Let's do one that's too big, 64. And now let's do one that's too small, 43. Now let's change this program so that we repeatedly ask the user for a bike frame size until they enter one that is within our range. We can do that by taking this entire program and putting it inside a while loop. And we're going to say while true. And we're going to indent all of this by one. I can do that by highlighting all of it and pressing tab. And now this program will run forever, which isn't what we want. What it'll do is it'll repeatedly ask for a frame size, and with each frame size it'll print if it's too big, too small, or the correct size. What we need to do is to tell this while loop to stop once we find a bike frame that is the correct size. And we can do that by putting a break in this branch of the if statement. That way, if the size wasn't greater than 60 and it wasn't less than 55, we can terminate the while loop. Now once the while loop is over, we can print something like found a bike. And that will only happen after the break was hit. Now let's try to run this. All right, 47, too small, 70, way too big, 
59, correct size, found a bike, and the program's done.